Hey everybody, it's Brick Waffle again, and we are back on Minecraft on the Block Farmers server in the house, and uh, we've made some changes since the last episode. Now, I'm sure for you guys it's, you know, one episode and then the next, but for me there's usually some time in between, usually a week or two. I try to record some of them in groups when I have the availability to do that, and that means that in between when I'm uh, playing, doing stuff off camera, uh, there's a lot to show you guys. So, um, I want to kind of go through and show you what we've changed. A lot of it is... Uh, interior in the basement. We're gonna get to that last. So we, you can see the staircase is gone and we have these mysterious little tunnels now. We're gonna come back to that and get a little preview there with our skylight as well. But let's start with outside. So yep, uh, <laughs> all the automated farms you had in the last episode, those have been moved. They're downstairs in the basement now, so we'll get to that in a bit. I needed some space to put in some regular farms for cows and pigs and sheep and llamas. And I didn't really need to have llamas. Uh, but I figured as long as I was doing that, let's see if we can get that to reload, there we go. As long as I was doing other farms, we may as well. Um, I also have done a few things to tweak some stuff here, so we've got our Dragon Skull Nether Portal, of course. Have to do that. Um, and because our house is modern, I've redone the stables to be a little bit more modern looking as well. And we have a little guest house over here. So let's come take a quick peek at the guest house. Um, this is just a real simple design, very boxy, just real... Real straightforward, little couch area, seating area, bed, furnace, chests, and crafting table. So if somebody wants to come and visit, they got a nice little place to stay. And that fit pretty well on the space that we had here. So these farms, like I said in the previous episode, I believe we had uh, some issues with these things not producing well, but you can see here in a second that that has, whoops, that has been solved. Ugh, I'm terrible with this elytra. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're having a little bit of problems with that. But the farms we're not having any problems with. So if you check in here, we've got tons of slime blocks, tons of slime balls, tons of gunpowder. It's doing really well. Uh, so I'm very, very happy with the way that farm turned out. And this over here is just our uh, re slight redesign of a drowned farm. So everything kind of consolidates into one place over here. Let's see if we can get this to work. There, we can't get that to go. So we'll just sprint over here the normal way with swimming because we have conduits in the water. Uh, so we've got one right over here, you can see, and that's why we have our conduit power. And this farm now basically takes all of the drowns and puts them into one spot here. If I'm present, I can kill them with a sword and try to get tridents. If I'm not, uh, then there's a trident under here that will kill, or trident, there's a conduit under here that will kill them because they're within eight blocks of it. So you can see that we're still getting some drops here and there, you know, a few gold bars, we'll take those. Uh, we're still getting some nautilus shells and drowned heads from when we are here killing them in person. But otherwise, it's going to be a little AFK rotten plush farm, which isn't terribly useful. But you know what? It was really helpful to get those tridents. So, whoop, there we go. Do I have my Riptide? I do. Let's just use this instead to get out of the water. So now we can use Riptide to launch ourselves out and then use our Elytra to fly around. And you can see we've done a little bit of work with some paths. So over here we have a path that goes off towards the mainland over that direction. It does nothing really here yet. We just lit up the path. And we've also kind of leveled out the part of our island that was really... Uh, let's just go back up here and take another look. We have one part that was kind of tall and stood out a little too much for me. Uh, so I kind of leveled that off here. We're going to come back and do some interesting things with that later on. But this side, what we had before, we cleared out that channel. And now we've put a bridge over it. And this is going to be our farming area for trees. So now we can see we've got our little logging set up here. Just a decorative. It really doesn't do anything. but. It looks nice, and we got a minecart chest we can push around. And then we have different trees planted in different little areas here. So we've got our spruce, and then we've got dark oak, we've got acacia down at the end, and we've got jungle down there. Obviously birch and regular oak we have on the island. So this is just a place to kind of harvest, or plant trees that we can harvest over again. And we are getting a few animal spawns as well, so we've got a few horses out that way. This makes it really easy to know where I need to go to get different types of wood. And it's not an automated farm. We've got plenty of those right now. Might come back and try to do an automated tree farm with Sonata Block at some point. He's uh, very interested in that as well. But what's really interesting is going to be downstairs. Um, and I want to show you also what some of the other block farmers have been doing. So what Sakala and Sonata Block and I have been doing, uh, not at my base, but kind of in a, some community areas. So we're going to take a look at that today as well. But I want to start out by showing you what we have downstairs. So if you remember before, we had the little, um, just set of staircase that went down into the storage room. Well, that whole area has been turned into a place with nano farms. We just have a drop into some water here. And this is the AFK fish farm. We've talked about this one before. This is Doc M's design. We just moved it over here. And we have our chicken cooker down here now, which can produce cooked chicken. 
Um, and apparently it can also produce some extra eggs and things when we aren't, uh... <laughs> hey, you know what? I might have the lava in there wrong because those should be getting killed by lava by now. That's kind of weird that they're not. I'll have to take a look at that. That might be messed up. And then this nano farm design by El Mango. Um, basically, there's bone meal in all these dispensers. And when we have things like carrots or wheat, uh, we can just stand on this. And it makes really loud clicking sound when we get into the right spot. But that will let us automatically plant and harvest carrots, um, potatoes, and wheat very, very quickly. So we have our water column here that's going to take us back up to the surface. But now we have down to sublevel. And this was the area I dug out underneath all of that. So this is our new area for storage. Uh, it's all in one row here because we have moved our automated farms down to the bottom. You can see it's still not a lossless farm. You know, we've got our little different cells here. Uh, these are the pumpkin and melon farm design we had, but there's just two stacks of them and it's working just fine. Pretty happy with that. We also have a fair amount of uh, gold now, and I'm going to show you about that in the and in the nether here in just a little bit, but we're doing pretty well on gold nuggets and gold ingots. We've got our uh, sugarcane farm down here that's working pretty well. And then this is where we're going to put all of our wall of heads. So as you can see, I've been out there killing a few animals, making sure that we get some head drops from the different horse types. We've got our pigs and cows and sheep, and I believe there's one for every different sheep type too, so that might take a little while. Um, but we've got a lot of stuff going on. We've got a few monster heads out here, obviously. This one uh, is a lot easier to get when you have a channeling trident, so you can shock creepers and get the lightning bolts and make them charge creepers. Got a few ocean things here as well. And then we have our furnace array and cactus farm over here. So cactus farm, again, this was just moved from outside. It's the same sort of concept we had before. Just some glass rods up here to pop the cactus off. And this furnace array uh, uses a minecart loader at the back and just dispenses and takes all the items and pushes them evenly into these furnaces. And same thing with the fuel. So if we come back through here, uh, we can see that there's dried kelp blocks in all of these. And every single one of those has them. Then everything that comes out of there gets put into this chest. Uh, I don't think there's a... Well, oh yeah, I can go back this way. I dug a little side tunnel here. Go around the side. And the this cart, this mine cart hopper, or mine cart chest, kind of goes through here. And you can see even in the hoppers, there's a bunch of kelp already kind of queued up. So it takes and goes through and distributes that. Whatever comes into this line from that chest goes into this mine cart. And this little mine cart uh, loader system, these are pretty common. You can see these on the wiki all the time. It just basically says, okay, well, if there's things in this hopper, then power this, unpower this rail. And that way this rail will then make the cart stop. And as soon as there's nothing in the hopper, it powers it up again, which forces the cart to move. So it's pretty, pretty easy stuff. Um, if you want to look at those up, they're, like I said, they're on the wiki. There's nothing really uh, super interesting about the design, but it looks really nice and it really works efficiently. And obviously today we are going to have something to do with this space. So I need to gather a few materials for that. And part of what I'm going to need is some soul sand. So we're definitely going to have to go through the nether. Now this uh, soul sand, speaking of which, water column right here, shoots us right up to the surface again. And that's it. So the reason we have this skylight is that this fish farm works way, way, way better if you have sky access. If you don't, it does not work very well at all. So sky access still counts if you've got glass above you. So that goes straight into our basement. And yet we've got our bat head over here because it kind of looks a little bit like Batman. So we've got another statue over there. We're going to leave that alone for now. But that's really kind of the tour of what I've been doing. Mostly it's been cosmetic stuff. Uh, we'll do some more of that together at some point. But uh, a lot of just moving things around. I figured there's no point in watching me rebuild uh, farms you've already seen me build. So thought I would do that in between episodes. Let's come in here and grab a minecart. And we're going to pop that down on our rails. So the nether system, um, it works. And we've got some different areas that go out to our other block farmers. And we're going to take a quick tour of their area first. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I think we'll do it that way. We're going to go see what uh, Sakala has set up. Because uh, she and Sonata Block and I have been working over there on a villager trading area and an aquarium. And we also want to look at a couple of uh, things that we've built here in the nether. All right. So, yep, we've got our head in glass up here. This is just to make sure nothing spawns on the rails. I'm pretty sure nothing can, um, but just in case something did spawn, you know, in an area that we didn't have these slabs on yet, we didn't want it to wander onto the rails, so this prevents a pigman from just walking up onto here. Now, this ladder up here goes to a wither killing machine. Uh, so this is basically how we do it. You put your 
soul sand right there and your skulls out here on top and what happens is the wither will spawn with his head stuck in the bedrock and his body stuck on these carts those carts count as entities so that will automatically uh, suffocate him with the max entity cramming and give you another star for basically no work you just stick him in there pop back down the ladder and you're good to go um, so that's a little uh, gizmo that we've kind of put together to help that and our spawn area over here um, one of the things that Sonata Block has been working on is a big old iron farm. So I think he's using one of Tango Tech's designs. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. I think it's the Iron Phoenix. Don't hold me to that. Uh, so we've got a kind of a small style iron farm that I put up there that works, but it's not great. And then he's working on a much, much, much better version of that. So I'll leave that there for just a second. And we'll pop out to the spawn. Alright, so this is the little one that I put together. This is a pretty common design. I'm sure you've seen this before. It's just a big box. It's kind of hard to tell from there. Big box with some villager cells on it and a bunch of doors and that helps make golems spawn in the area. And then what happens is all their drops, the golems come in here, they stand with their heads in lava and they drop some iron. They also drop some poppies, but you know, we're doing pretty well. We're getting plenty of iron from that. Um, that is Sonata Blocks project. So it's still a work in progress. It's a huge undertaking. So kudos to him for taking that on. But this is gonna be one of the big iron farms with individual villages that have the villagers kind of auto detect things. It can reset itself. It's got all sorts of cool features. So that's a big, big, big project. And when he gets ready to put the, all the doors in that, which is kind of the last step, this thing's coming down. So might as well leave it running and getting iron until that's built. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be a really cool project. So let's go pop back through here and move on to our next little area. Okay, there we go. Oops, actually, before we do that, goodbye, minecart. I'll miss you. I want to pop up here to our gold farm. You probably might have seen that when we were coming by. And this design uses some AI behavior with uh, turtles. And because zombie pigmen hate turtles and turtle eggs, um, let's see if we can. Oops, that's cooked salmon. Let's go ahead and eat that. And let's see if we can bounce ourselves up here with a rocket. Oh, thought we had it. There we go. What the? That's weird. I hear it working. There. Wow, that took us a lot. Too many rockets. Let's see if we can land on this thing without killing ourselves. Yep. All right, we did. Um, they hate turtle eggs. So you can see those pigmen down there are going to try to go for that turtle egg because there's trap doors on the side of that. They're not going to realize they can't get to it. And then they just fall to their deaths. It is ridiculously efficient because we're up here high enough that nothing is loaded for spawn other than the top of the nether. And since nothing can spawn on the bedrock, what we're looking at that's covered with glass down there, that is literally the only spawnable area in the world that's currently loaded. So it spawns really quickly. Uh, you can see they just all stream towards that turtle egg and then can't quite get to it. So this also works in the overworld for zombies. If you wanted a kind of a passive zombie farm, you could do the same sort of thing here. Um, you could even have them go into a pit of water and turn them into drowned, but that does not let them drop tridents, unfortunately. So this does work. It works really well in, in the nether because they can drop their gold nuggets, which is what we really care about. So you can see that that's pretty effective. Let's just pop down here, and we'll use our elytra to glide down to the bottom. And they just all fall onto this set of slabs, and because it's a long enough drop, they die. All their stuff goes through the slabs into the hoppers. And we've got a fair amount of gold in here, and we've got our rotten flesh in this one. And we've just got a basic item filter here that says, you know, gold nuggets go into this. Everything else goes right around instead into this back array of chests. So as long as we are out here cleaning this up, we've got a couple of different chests for gold. We got, I think, three different chests, double chests for rotten flesh. So we could AFK here for a while and get tons and tons of gold. So that really helps because we put in our guardian farm and that has a beacon using gold blocks. And see, you're not supposed to be down here, but I think he can spawn right there. Although I didn't think he could spawn in a space with a ladder. All right, well, it's possible he came down from up above, but uh, we're not gonna worry too much about that. And I did let the minecart go back here, so we're gonna have to run back and we'll grab that when we get to the other side. All right, and we are back at Sakala's house. And we've got our little nether portal right there. She's got a nice little outdoor fire pit with some lapis blocks in the background, looking really nice. And because we have fire spread turned off, we're not worried about these slabs at all. A little boardwalk, and of course her house over here, looking pretty good as well. She has a nice aquarium now with some different fish in it. 
uh, just inside the house, but we've also got a bigger aquarium outside we're going to take a quick peek at here in a second. Um, just looking pretty good. She's got her paths going out to the different areas for different villages. But yeah, here we're going to see that. So we're going to talk about that in just a second. But right here is our aquarium that we build. And this was a fun little adventure. Um, just having got, trying to go around and catch fish in buckets. So we can put them all into this. So now we have our aquariums. And I believe this was Il Mango's design with the uh, waterlogged stairs. So you have glassless aquariums. You can actually kind of walk in here if you want. But you, this way the fish don't swim out. Uh, the, the AI keeps them from swimming out. But if there were more than one fish in a tank, they would bump into each other and push one of them out. Uh, also, salmon can sometimes go between tanks if there's only one gap between them because they're so long. So this is just some of the tropical fish. There are way more tropical fish than this in the game. And so Sonata Block has a similar aquarium at his base, where we're going to try to have different fish in different aquariums and give a nice reason to go check out each other's bases too. Now this over here as a villager breeder, connected to a villager trading system. So the villager breeder is a pretty typical one. You can see a bunch of doors up top with a villager that kind of detects that there's a village that needs to have more villagers bred. And then these guys in here, as long as there's food, they'll make more villagers. We have a little minecart system that takes them inside and puts them into our trading hall so that we can trade with the villagers that have good trades. So you can see we've got some guys that take raw pork and raw chicken. So what we've done is just put signs up that say what they need and how many to get emeralds or if it's like an infinity, how many they need for that. He's locked out on paper. Infinity is 19 emeralds in a book uh, and, and rotten flesh for 37. So actually what we're trying to do with these is if it needs a book too, we want to put on there, oops, give rid of that. Infinity is 19 plus. And that plus means that it needs a book as well. Um, so got a, a farmer over here that will give us pretty good deal for pumpkins and melons, which is going to be very helpful with our pumpkin and melon farm. Mending, couple of different mending villagers, one that does it for just emeralds, one that does it for emeralds and a book, a riptide, and a channeling. And this is the one where we can have our uh, trident do lightning when it hits stuff, as long as it's raining or in the water. So that's pretty sweet. Um, but this little area is very helpful. That's why we have mending on all of our armor now, and pretty much all of our tools too, I think. Yep. Yeah, we do have it on that too. The only thing we don't have it on is the bow because you can't have infinity and mending at the same time. But that setup right there has proven to be very, very helpful. All right, and like I said, little paths that go off to the other villages so that she can connect them all off. She's also working on um, little stations with horses at each one. So if you want to ride between them, you can just pick up a horse, take it to another village, drop it off, pick up a different horse, kind of like a horse ride share. All right, so we're back and we want to put in over here another warp farm. And this is going to be very, very straightforward, um, but it's going to be pretty helpful for us to get tons of nether warp very, very easily. It's not a totally AFK nether warp form, farm. It's also not one that's, you know, many, many stories long, but it is going to be something you've probably seen before. Uh, if you haven't built one of these in your own world, it's pretty handy. Uh, basically, you just put a row of soul sand at uh, the back. We're going to put some rails and powered rails here. And actually, I need to get one more thing to make this all work. Oh, I can't put rails on the sea lanterns. So we're going to have to move that around. And yep, these blocks are craftable because we have the hermit pack, our hermit craft data pack. Uh, so let's just swap these around a little bit. We're going to put the sea lantern there, the sandstone, the smooth stone there. These are available in creative mode normally, but because of the recipe edition, we can now craft these as well. Uh, there we go. So let's just pop that in there. And then we're going to be able to put rails in. So the idea is that we're going to put rails across this thing. We're going to put a powered rail that's always powered on the one side and that has a lever on the other side so that we can toggle this thing on and off. And then we're just going to sit in the cart and ride back and forth holding down right click. And that's going to let us do two things. It's going to let us harvest all the nether wart, and it's also going to let us replant it all. So now that we've got that over here, let's put this guy down and we're going to put a lever here and that should, you know, that lets us toggle the power on. So one thing we're going to have to be careful about is that we don't hit the lever. Yeah, we might let's see if we can maybe put that behind this. That'll work. Then we won't, we won't be facing it. Our regular rails over here and we're just going to go straight across and put rails down on all these blocks and we need, um, something to power this rail all the time. So probably just need like a lever back there as well. Let me go ahead and grab that. But the idea is that, oh, and I need a minecart too. We're gonna have all this nether wart over here and we're gonna ride back and forth on a rail cart like this, where we can just right click and place nether wart and then we'll be able to right click and break it when it's all fully grown. 
Uh, and I think we might have to hold left and right click to kind of be able to do both uh, without breaking stuff. We'll figure that part out in a minute. I know this works before, um, so that's going to be really helpful either way. So that's the idea. It's going to be pretty straightforward. Um, and if this is a pretty good concept, we could also loop this around so that you basically hop over and you get inside a little loop in the middle and you just keep going. The trick is, if you want to do this AFK, you would have to have uh, you're facing one direction on all that. I'm not going to be worried about doing this AFK. I don't need that much nether wart. So worst case, we just have a couple rows and we have to actually turn our camera around a little bit. So let's go get a torch or redstone block or something we can use for power over there. So we got our redstone components. Great, we got some torch. Actually, you know what? Let's just use a lever back there. We got that too. So come on this side. And this time we just need this to be always powered on. So we'll just do the same thing and just leave that one flicked on. Um, and of course we didn't grab a minecart. Did we? No, okay, we didn't. Uh, so let's grab a minecart. And then I'll show you how this works. So rails is down on this end, minecarts is right there. There we go. And if we come back and just leave this one on the track. So um, for those who don't know how powered minecart or powered rails work, if there's a minecart on a powered rail that's off, it basically acts as a brake. If you have it on, it's going to automatically power it and send it moving if it's adjacent to a block. Uh, and we're going to need a few more of these because we don't have enough. But the idea is that you know we're going to come down here and we're going to need a few more powered rails to make this work. But it's going to send us along and we're going to come by and just you know click all these, break them all off here. And then we're going to come back through when we come back the other way, all the way at the end and just right click them all like this and just hold right click down. So we'll be able to go and really easily place back all the nether wart we need. And it actually works to go all the way across as long as we're in the cart. It's empty carts that need extra powered rails. So that is fine with me because I don't need this to run when I'm not in it. And then what we'll do is, you know, like at the very end when we're done, we'll just turn this switch off and then that will act as a braking rail. And even if it goes to the very end, it's just going to stop there. And you can see that's pretty effective. We've got tons of nether wart already. Um, and I could like very easily extend this to be a loop right through here and then have another row of nether wart on this side. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to need to get a few more uh, regular rails, I think. I don't think I'm going to have quite have enough to do the whole thing. Oops. We'll come back and get those in a second. There we go. Get that guy and that guy. And then, really, we just need to worry about, um, let's see, if we're going to power that. That's what we're going to have to worry about is how to power that. So let's, let's assume that we're going to have, we can't do the powered rail on the end there because we need to be able to turn this. So we'll have to come back and put a little bit more power in, but this should go all the way across this way now. And then we'll have to move that. And that, is that gonna make the turn? Hmm, it may not. We might have to put that powered rail somewhere else. Let's see, let's see. If we just hop into this cart, I know it's gonna turn onto that, but I'm not sure if it's gonna turn again. It does. Okay, good. So that'll work just fine. So we need one of these to be always powered or powerable. And I don't think that's going to power that. So I'll have to come back and do a little bit of redstone work on that to get this to work up. But that's the idea. We'll have the thing where it just goes through as a loop and then we get to the end, we'll turn and we'll face our camera the other way and then we'll turn back and we'll be able to harvest a lot of nether wart really easily. So I'm going to go ahead and plant all of this stuff. We'll do a little bit of redstone wiring. I need to do uh, some figuring out here, but I think that's going to have to do it for today. I know this was basically just a tour of what we did off camera and a very, very small project together. Hopefully that's all right with you guys. If you did like this episode, please be sure to hit that like button. If you really liked it, then make sure to subscribe. And as always, I've been Brick Waffle. Thank you for watching.